This presentation is a part of a lecture series on the C++ programming language by Michael Adams at the University of Victoria in Victoria, Canada. For those of you who might be interested, a copy of the slides for this lecture series can be downloaded from the website whose URL is given at the bottom of this slide. In this section, I'm going to be discussing function objects, or functors as they're better known. In many programming contexts, a function object, or also known as a functor, is a very useful tool. So what exactly is a functor? A functor is simply an object that can be invoked or called as if it were an ordinary function. In other words, a functor is, a, is an object whose class overloads the function call operator, operator around brackets. A class that provides a member function overloads operator around brackets is what we call a functor class. And then an object of that class is simply a functor. Now functors are very, very uh, useful tools because of the fact they're much more flexible than functions. And what I mean by this is a function, if you want to pass information into a function, the only good way to do this is to pass it as parameters. You pass parameters into the function, this is the way that you get information into a function. Functors, on the other hand, because they're a class object, they also have, can have data members. So you can have many, many other pieces of information associated with a functor, which are stored in data members. In other words, Functors have the advantage that not only can you pass information into them using the function call operator, but you can also have pass information into them because they can have state information stored in data members. So you have additional flexibility in the case of functors. And this is what makes functors very, very useful, uh, especially in generic programming. And as we'll see later, the standard library makes very heavy use of functors. On this slide, we have an example of a functor class, and the class is called less than. What makes this a functor class is the fact that it overloads the function call operator using this member function operator around brackets. It overloads it with two double parameters, which are denoted by x and y here. And you can see all the functions doing in its bodies is just checking to see if x is less than y and returning the result as a bool. Down below we have a function called myfunc, which is going to make use of our functor class from above. We create a double variable called a, which is initialized to 1, and then a double variable called b, which is initialized to 2, and then we create a functor called less than. And particularly, this functor is of the class less than from above here. On the next line, we're going to use the functor to compare a and b and see if a is less than b. Now, it looks like the, this line of code here, it looks like here this is a function call operation, but it's not actually a function call because less than is not the name of a function, it's the name of an object. However, syntactically we can write something that looks like a function call because this particular class object, the class to which it belongs, has overloaded operator round brackets, the function call operator, such that we can apply the function call operator with two double parameters here, as we've done. But really what happens, this is not a function call, instead it's going to invoke the member function which overloads the function call operator, this function here to compare if a is less than b. And then the re result that's returned here, since a is actually less than b, because a is 1, b is 2, this function is going to return true. So result will be assigned the value true. Now in this particular case, it turns out that the, the function, member function that we have here, in order for it to do its job, in, order to, in other words, in order for it to test if one thing is less than the other thing, the only thing it needs to know are the two things that it's comparing, x and y. So in this case, we could actually use just a regular function to accomplish this goal. But in some cases, you may have an operation that you need to perform here where it needs more information than just the values that are passed in as parameters. And in this sort of situation, a, a functor is very, very useful. On this slide, we have an example of a functor class with state. And what I mean by state is that the class has one or more data members that are used to store some state information that's necessary for the functor class to do its job. And in particular, you can see that this functor class called isGreater has a data member called threshold underscore. So this is some state that needs to be stored in order for the class to do its job. Now the goal that we want to achieve here is we want to be able to achieve with syntax that looks like what's shown on this line here. We want to be able to test an integer value against the threshold and determine whether it's greater than this threshold. But we want to do this without passing as an explicit parameter what the threshold value is that we're comparing against. So we want to compare x against the threshold, but we don't want to pass explicitly in this function call operation what the threshold is. 
Because of this, we can't use a regular function, because with a regular function, the only way to pass information into the function is to pass it as explicit parameters. However, we can achieve this goal with a functor class. In other words, we can achieve this goal by using a functor. So what we do here is we provide our, in our functor class here, we're going to overload the function call operator with a single int parameter, which is the number that we want to test against our threshold to see if it's greater. And then inside the function, you can see what it's doing. It's checking to see if x is greater than some threshold. But the key thing to note here is the threshold is not passed as an explicit parameter to this function. Instead, it's coming from a data member of the class. But of course, there needs to be a way to get the right value into that data member. So what we do is we also provide a constructor for this class that takes as a single parameter the value that we want the threshold to have. And you can see what this constructor does is it initializes the data member threshold underscore to the parameter that we've provided to the constructor. So in this way, we can initialize this data member to the value we want. And then if we look at this function myfunc below and see how we're actually using the functor class that we've created, we first of all create a class object of the type isGreater, called isGreater with lowercase i here, and we're passing to the constructor a value of 5. So this is going to create an isGreater object where the threshold is set to 5. So this data member here, threshold underscore, will be set to 5. Then we create a variable x of type int, which is initialized to 3, and then we call or invoke, or I should say apply the function call operator to this isGreater object, passing x as a parameter. So essentially what we want to do is we want to check to see if x, which happens to have the value 3, is greater than some threshold where the threshold happens to have the value 5. So when, again, this looks like a function call, but it's not. Instead, what we're doing is we're invoking the function call operator for the class because we've overloaded it as a member function, the function call operator here. So this line of code here, this expression here, is going to invoke this function. This value x, which is equal to 3, is going to get passed in as this function parameter. And we're then going to check if 3 is greater than our threshold. Our threshold is going to be the data member that was initialized back when we constructed the object, and we initialize the threshold to 5. So we'll check to see if 3 is greater than 5. Clearly this is false, so it will return false. So the re value returned by this function call operation is going to be false. So re result, the bool value result will get assigned the value false. And again, what's important here is that because we want to pass some information into the operation that's being performed by this operation here, by this function call, in other words, by this function call here. And one of the pieces of information that we need to do the job is not passed as an explicit parameter. In particular, threshold is not passed as an explicit parameter to this function. This forces us to have to use a, a functor as opposed to using a regular function, because a regular function can only have information passed in through explicit parameters. Whereas here, we have one piece of data, namely threshold underscore, which is not passed as an explicit parameter. It's coming from a data member of the class object.